Hello, my name is Scott Smith, and I'm a technical consultant with the Center for Behavioral Health and Justice at Wayne State University. There are many reasons why individuals living with a serious mental illness don't treat their illness. And assisted outpatient treatment is specifically designed to address some of those reasons, including a condition known as anosognosia, which is just a fancy term for the impairment and the ability to understand or recognize that you're sick. And this is really a significant part of what's going on for individuals who are targeted for intervention with assisted outpatient treatment. And the reason is that when individuals living with a serious mental illness experience anosognosia, it directly compromises whatever treatment they're experiencing by interrupting it. It makes it unlikely that they're going to adhere to any of the treatment from day to day and ultimately, every time they stop their treatment, things get worse. Now, how common is it for individuals to experience anosognosia when they're living with serious mental illness? Well, across multiple studies, it turns out that it's very common, with some studies estimating uh, as high as 98% of individuals who are living with schizophrenia experience anosognosia. And for those individuals living with bipolar disorder, especially when they're primarily experiencing the manic phase of bipolar disorder, nearly half, 40% are estimated to experience this. This is very common when somebody is feeling that grandiose, exuberant feeling associated with mania. They don't wanna take their medications because their medications don't let them feel that, don't let them feel as powerful or is capable. And as a result, individuals living with anosognosia are very resistant to treatment. They believe that they're fine, they're not sick, they don't need any help, and they don't adhere to treatment. And there's a growing body of evidence that suggests when individuals with a serious mental illness don't consistently adhere to treatment, that their condition is less likely to respond to those treatments and that they're at risk for other advanced neurological illnesses down the road. To better understand what's going on with somebody who is experiencing this inability to recognize their illness, we need to understand the parts of the brain that are affected. So the first part that's affected is the frontal lobe, which is responsible for helping us to move our body um, to the broader process of thinking or evaluating something. It's responsible for our feelings, imagination, decision-making. It's the part of our brain that really is what makes us human. And within that frontal lobe is a little area known as the prefrontal cortex. Now, important to recognize about this part of the brain is it's the last to develop. It doesn't develop until we're in our mid-20s. So when you're thinking about somebody with an impairment from an anosognosia, Think about how their brain might function more like a child's than like an adult's. That is, they're going to have difficulties uh, making good judgments, challenges planning, um, decision making is going to be compromised. They're going to have a harder time regulating their emotions, and their impulse control is going to be poor very often. Another part of the brain that's affected is the parietal lobe, which is basically where our brain takes in all of the information from our five senses, pulls it together to help us interpret what's going on around us. It's this part of the brain that helps us interpret what we're feeling in terms of pressure, pain. It's also how you would interpret the sensations of heat and cold. The final area of the brain that we believe is affected by this condition of anosognosia is a very small region of the brain, the insula. And this is a part of the brain that we're learning a lot about still. But what we know is that it's responsible for the highest level functions that we engage in as humans. And it's responsible in a way that has more of an evaluation oriented slash selection oriented role. So, for example, our emotional reaction, especially the intensity of how we react. Do we react disproportionate to the situation? This part of the brain seems to control that. Uh, it works with that 
other part of our brain, the parietal lobe, to evaluate the intensity of pain. It's also the part of our brain that seems to be activated when we're making decisions when we're emotional. So it plays a role in risky decision-making. We know that when we make decisions when we're really angry or when we're really happy or in love, those aren't always the decisions that we would make uh, if we weren't feeling those intense emotions. And this is the part of the brain that seems to be responsible for that. It's also where we form our ability to sympathize and recognize others' emotions. And finally, it plays a role in our awareness of our physical self, that is the sensation within inside our bodies. And because these areas of the brain are affected, we need an intervention that assumes that there's a compromise in this type of function. And this is where AOT comes in and can be so helpful. Assisted outpatient treatment accomplishes its goal by addressing treatment non-adherence from two separate directions. First, by targeting the individual, compelling them via a court order to receive appropriate mental health treatment. But it does something else. It also addresses the issues by targeting the mental health system. And that is committing the mental health system to provide treatment and ensure that the treatment is occurring. Sadly, sometimes this is where the system does fail. You probably had experiences where you've attempted to do everything in your power to help somebody, to connect them to services, and those services don't seem to function properly. Cicel patient treatment is specifically designed to help ensure that it does function the way it's supposed to. Thank you for your time watching this webinar. This training is presented as part of the Michigan Assisted Outpatient Treatment Toolkit. And to learn more, please visit behaviorhealthjustice.wayne.edu forward slash AOT.